Hi, Steve Stein here, and today what I'd like to do is talk to you about something really important, which is learning how to combine both scales and arpeggio ideas into the same flow when you're soloing to make things a little more creative for you and for your listeners. So if you like this video, please do me a favor, share it, and subscribe to the channel so you always know when I come out with new videos. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's just look at an E major chord. Okay, and it doesn't matter where you play it, just a plain old E major sound. Now, most of us, when we would go to solo over something like this, the first thing we're gonna do is go, well, where do we know E major, right? So you might come up here and play, or you might go down here. And it doesn't make any difference. Any of those things are going to be just fine. The point is, is oftentimes when we play, uh, when we're using a scale, everything that we play tends to sound very much like a scale and it sounds less creative like a solo. So what I want to do is talk to you just about a couple of different things and see if, if this will help you in maybe visualizing your fretboard a little bit differently. And I will be using the E major uh, chord as our example. So let's say, for instance, we just took our E major scale. I'm going to be using this right here. Just going to use that as my example. Now, if I'm playing, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and think a little bit about the chord that I'm playing over. For instance, if I've got this E sitting right here, I'm going to want to think about the root and the third and the fifth. And those are kind of my comfort places that I can go within the context of my solo. So it's really important step one to really understand that when you're playing a scale over a chord, all the notes will function just fine, but there are certain notes that will sound more like home, so to speak, for you to land on, for you to emphasize within the context of your solo. And because the chord is built off of the, the root, the third and the fifth of your scale, and again, if you don't know that, don't worry about it. But in this case, I'm playing an E chord, so an E major, so it's E, G sharp, and B. Those are my three notes. So I wanna be aware of where they are in my fretboard, whether it's because I know all my notes on my guitar, or whether or not it's because I've memorized you know, various chord or arpeggio shapes or something like that, and I know where they're at. Either way is perfectly fine. Um, but I wanna be aware of that. So instead of just playing your scale and just moving around, what you start doing is trying to give yourself a little more directive movement towards those notes, the root and the third and the fifth. Well, when you do that, you wind up with a shape we call an arpeggio. So oftentimes you may have seen this before. If I played this right here. This would be the root, the third, the fifth, the root, the third, the fifth, and then the root again. And I could play it over here like this, or this. Okay, there's lots of different places that I can go to play these notes. Now, depending on how we're taught, depending on where we take lessons, where we get our information from, oftentimes our solos are based more off the arpeggio ideas on the guitar, and then we, we uh, expand from that arpeggio to add different notes. Or we start with a scale and we sort of contract, we restrict ourselves from playing all the notes all the time to get more of an arpeggio idea going. And if you say arpeggio, it's just fine however you like to say it. So the point is we got to find a happy medium somewhere in, in between there. And, and who are you? Do you tend to solo more thinking of the chordal structures or do you solo more thinking more about the scale structures? And it's fine either way. So my point is, is this, if I see this E major chord right here and I'm going to solo over the top of it, if I just go in there and start doing this, It'll sound fine, but I really need to start giving this some sort of direction. And an easy way to do that is to start visualizing an arpeggio. So as I'm playing through this scale, I see these notes, they start kind of sticking out in my brain. Now, 
at this point, I, again, I could go anywhere I want on the fretboard, but what I want to do is I want to start thinking about coloring this up a little bit. So at any point, if, if this begins to get a little confusing for you, you can always stop and just work with one of two things or three different things or whatever. So the first thing is, is learning how to see. I'm going to give you a couple of different things to memorize here. I won't have sheets on this. I'll just, you'll just have to back it up and, and watch the video a couple of times. But what I'm using right now are these shapes. I'm going to use this E major scale that I just showed you. And then what I'm going to use are a couple of different arpeggio shapes. The one I'm going to use over here, I'm going to start on the seventh fret of the fifth string with my pinky. I'm going to play seven, then six, then four, then five, then four. Now I can also play the seven here, which can lead me up to the 12 here. So if you think about it, I've got this shape right there. The other one I'm going to use is this one right here that I was just playing. I'm going to play 7, 11, 9, 9, 9, and then 7, and then 12. Now you can see how I could connect from this one into that. Now, I don't tend to play my arpeggio ideas in, in this kind of strict manner as, as people do, and I think it sounds wonderful, it's just I don't. So what I tend to do is I try and figure out how to take this arpeggio idea and color it up before I even start using it, instead of just playing it as a strict root third fifth to try and make like a, a speed sweep out of it or something like that, I try and use it more in a melodic sense. So I might take this thing that we're playing right now, this, that shape right there, and instead of just playing it as the root third fifth, what I do is I start adding in some color notes. And the first one that I really love to add is what we refer to as the major seventh, which if you're on, if you're in the key of E and you're playing an E, it would just be a half step down from the root. And it's a really nice note because it adds a lot of color. resolves really nice by going up that half step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arpeggio that I'm playing right now, and I'm going to add that major seventh in right there. Okay. And I'm not going to add the root back in, but I do know that the E is sitting right there. And you'll see I'm adding it back here on the 11th fret as well. Now, if I take that idea, and again, this takes some practice, but if I take that idea and instead of just playing it all the way up and all the way down, I just visualize that that is sitting there along with and I start combining these three elements, the scale, the arpeggio, and then these color notes that we talked about, the root, the fifth, or the third, excuse me, and the fifth. And now I've got the seventh, which again, I really like the sound of. You might not, and that's okay. But as I'm playing, see there's a scalar run. So if I was coming off this, I might run into, bit of an arpeggio at the end of that to break things up. And if I was over here playing that arpeggio that I just told you about, I would do the same thing. So over this E, so just kind of screw around with those sounds. And if I get somewhere I like, I might start using some sort of arpeggio. See? 
so if you've got a chord, you might start off with arpeggio, and then move into something else. Again, I don't just want to sit and noodle for and waste your time, but the point is, this is what I'd like you to try and mess around with a little bit, is learning how to visualize both of these things. I get a lot of people that contact me all the time saying, my solos always sound like I'm just playing up and down a scale, and oftentimes, the, the two things that they're missing are, number one, they're not giving their, their scale movements some sort of melodic direction by trying to target certain notes, whether it's a note within the chord, or maybe a note that's outside the chord that adds color and maybe some tension that can always be resolved if needed or something like that, like the root third fifth that I'm talking about. Or the other thing is, is that they're not really familiar with the concept of playing an arpeggio, breaking apart the chord and playing it um, to give a bit more reinforcement of the sounds that that chord is actually needing within the context of your solo, you see? Because if you're just going... You might make a really cool lick out of it, but at some point you've got to start making some sort of connectivity to the chord that's being played. And what's really cool about this is as you start adding more chords, which I certainly should do a video on sometime in the near future, you actually create a chord progression. Then you start thinking about all of these things that we're talking about, but they're changing as each chord is coming up. So when you move from an E uh, major chord to a C sharp minor or whatever it might be, then all of a sudden your thought process changes a little bit as opposed to just playing through this scale moving up and down. So you're giving your solo a bit more direction. So it's something to think about, combining your arpeggio, maybe customizing that arpeggio a little bit like you saw that I did by adding that major seventh. The other thing that I think is really cool, and I wasn't gonna talk about this, but if you're still with me, maybe this will be fun for you. And it's okay if you don't know your theory, okay? But when you're playing the scale, when you play an E major scale, you're playing the notes uh, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, okay? A lot of times when I play this, this arpeggio and I'm adding that major seventh in, when I add this, this fourth note here, it just sounds a little bit it's right, don't get me wrong, but oftentimes when I'm playing that, that note right there is I'm playing this arpeggio with the major seven. My brain wants me to not go to that note. It actually wants me to go to this note, which is the raised fourth, which if you know anything about your theory, it would be like you're playing in Lydian. Now again, this causes confusion because people go, well, what if your song isn't in Lydian? Or if you play that, that raised fourth or that sharp four, then, and it's not right, then do you have to commit to that sharp four all the time? And for me, it's, it's no. It just, it's all about sound. Like if you're playing over an E chord, you decide you like. But then maybe as I come down my scale, I go back to the normal four down here. Right, right there, I'm just going to an A. We're up here. When I play that arpeggio, I, plays that, I play that raised fourth sound. And as I come down, I'm not using it down on the bottom. That, that doesn't, I don't have an in, internal conflict with that. It's okay that I'm changing things up because I like the sound of it. Now, there might be situations where that wouldn't work, right? If you're, if you're playing a, a particular chord progression and it's very strict, maybe you can't do that. But oftentimes we find ourselves playing a lot of, you know, rock or metal or various jazz situations where we really do have that freedom. We just, in our minds, we don't think we do because the, the key has told us what, what we're playing or, you know, we learned how to play a major scale and if you know, what, what, whatever the reasons might be. And then all of a sudden we're thinking to ourselves, well, we can't step outside this box. We have to be correct. Well, correct is, is a relative term because it's all about what you're trying to make something sound like. So I love the sound of that. That raised four, I just think it sounds wonderful. 
So I would use that in my playing. Where again, when I come down to the bottom, I might not. I might still use it. But I might not. I might just use the regular four and it's okay too. So that might be another topic of another conversation sometimes. So I hope that doesn't confuse you. But it's just things to think about to see if we can keep trying to expand your creativity and your enjoyment of this instrument for yourself and for maybe somebody that's listening to you playing. So remember, take care, stay positive. If you like this video, please do me a favor and like it and share it and subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you click the subscribe button so you're always notified when I have new videos. And if you need help choosing a guitar course that's perfect for you, make sure that you click the help me choose link in the description.